All right, so comic books got started at the end of the 30s. Uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, the guys who created Superman, they wanted it to be a newspaper strip. There was a lot of cachet in being a newspaper strip uh, at the end of the 30s, but they weren't good enough, so they ended up being published in, in this sort of disreputable format, which was the comic book, and for whatever reason, people bought a lot of Superman comics, so now we're dealing with this, this you know, the whole thing. Uh, everything comes out of Superman and nobody really understands exactly why kids in the late 30s wanted to buy it. Maybe he was buff, maybe he was muscular, maybe, you know, it, it uh, my personal suspicion is that Superman can do individually what we as a society can do collectively with all the, the technological improvements that have come, come around in the 20th century. So. Superman can bend the course of mighty rivers, which is something that the Works Progress Administration could do over the course of many months. Superman can do it in a few panels. Superman is both the uh, nebbish, everyman, Clark Kent kind of character, and he's got these amazing technological powers that exist collectively within industrial civilization. So I can see why Superman, you know, people like uh, Umberto Eco and many others have said that Superman is a, uh, a myth figure like uh, Her Heracles or, or uh, Peter Pan, any of these, uh, the, these sort of myth, myth figures from past cultures, Superman is our equivalent uh, in modern industrial society. And I think that's, that's, I think that's pretty true. Uh, and I think that the twist on it is that Superman is essentially, like he only exists because people buy Superman stuff, right? People buy the shirts, so Superman exists. Superman will continue to exist as long as he is saleable. And all of the, the subsequent Supermen will continue to exist as long as they are saleable. So the thing that you get when you, when you really dive into comics and you study comics uh, intensely is this really detailed picture of the tastes and the desires of a pretty large segment of the American population at any given time. In the 1960s, DC figured out that you could sell more books if you put an ape on the cover. So suddenly, there were apes in everything. Why did people want to see apes in everything? We don't know, but we have that charted. We have that data charted because not only were people listening to the public and watching the, the sales data on those comics, but you've got a dedicated minority that is charting, you know, very, very closely, like keeping track of all this financial data. And that's, that's something that's really important in this age of inclusion and, and justice. Uh, comic books have always been dominated by a certain minority, by a minority within the American population that's very well represented in media and banking. And I'm talking, of course, about nerds. There's a lot of nerds into comic books. And if you want to know why comics are important, it's because if you, if you, outside of the individual stories, because you can have writers and artists and people who really put like feeling and, and passion into their work, they don't matter. All the, the, the passion and feeling that you put into an individual comic story is going to be reset at the end of the issue or at the end of the run or whenever it ceases to be profitable. Superhero comics are published on a monthly basis, you know, sometimes more frequently, and they've been coming out consistently since the end of the 1930s, since the Great Depression. Superman has a beginning and he has a middle, but Superman can never end because Superman is always taking place in the present. And you see this in the, in the comics. It starts out in the 30s. If you buy a Superman comic today, he's like on Snapchat, he's on Instagram, he's connected up. And the reason for that is that Superman has to exist in the present because of the extingencies of publishing. Superman's story can never end, and the details of Superman's life can never actually change. All that happens within each individual Superman story is the illusion of change. No matter what happens in the story, Lois Lane gets killed, Jimmy Olsen gets turned into a gorilla, Superman gets hit with red kryptonite, now he has an ant head. It's going to be reversed at some point in the future because eventually Superman always corrects itself to the last profitable mean. And this is how the, the story perpetuates itself. I don't know what it means to be in a society where our myths are incapable of resolving themselves, where our, we have these heroes that never do the things that, that 
actual human beings do or that traditional heroes have done. They don't grow old. They don't plan anything. They don't struggle in any significant way. They just continue to exist in this unending, timeless nightmare so that they can continually be sold. They are, they are standing in the midst of the fire of time and yet they are not consumed. And that's why I think superheroes are important. I, I, I find it unbelievable that anybody would disagree with me. And yes, I've had sex. I've had a lot.